to our practice sessions 10, 22, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize the things I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to approach the things I'm trying to do here. I do think presenting the information is useful to get it in your mind because verbalizing it will get it in your mind in a way that I don't think you otherwise would be able to do. So if anybody wants to take these resources, like the Excel worksheet, make your own practice sessions, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that, we will try to provide you with these uh, worksheets. They will be orientated, however, from the perspective of us from behind the guitar with the low string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as if we were behind the guitar and imprinted the guitar strings onto the page. I will also reverse my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, everything is kind of going in the same direction and we can spend all of our time just trying to navigate uh, on uh, the fretboard from that one particular perspective, the perspective of actually playing the thing from behind the guitar. Okay, so this time we're going to be looking at the 13th. Our overall objective is basically going to be, I would like to be able to play in any of the modes. In order to play in any of the modes, I need to know the relative positions of the modes, the notes uh, in the key by shape or by uh, interval construction or by formula, holes and half steps, which I was looking at in prior weeks. Uh, and then I could use the major scale as basically a point for us to reference to when I go to say the Dorian mode or the Phrygian mode or something like that so that I could still see the relative positions to the major key helping me to determine what kind of chords we make starting out with the major and minor chords, which we first typically learn in a major scale where we have the one, four, five, have a major chord construction, three note triad chord, the two, three, and the six having a minor chord construction, meaning that the third is either major or minor. Beyond that, however, we would like to know what to do with the 7, 9, 11, and 13, which we can only really know, I think, the best way to actually do that, actually the most efficient way, is to think about these as modes, right? They're modal chords, which will tell us the intervals that are going to be related uh, to the different modes. So if I say I'm playing the 1, 4, 5, I'm really playing the Ionian chord, the Lydian chord, the Mixolydian chord, which all have a 1, 4, 5 that are going to be the same major chord construction from an interval perspective, but they're going to be differences in terms of if I want to add the 7, 9, 11, and 13. Now there's kind of shortcuts that we'll talk about to kind of learning it. So you might say, hey, look, which of these 7, 9, 11, and 13 can I can I basically always use the same for the one, four, five major chord constructions and which can be different. So that's one way to kind of chunk things up in our mind. So I'm gonna, we'll go into that in a, a little bit. And then we also have the idea of what does it mean to have a nine, 11 and 13 when there's only seven notes in a particular uh, scale. So we're gonna have to convert in our mind the terminology typically used to make a chord, which we skip every other note, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, and the terminology used to create uh, the intervals in relative positions to a scale, because these relative positions are what we typically are learning when we practice our scale shapes. And so if I, so I wanna use those same interval constructions to think about chord construction, so that again, we're kind of as, as efficient as possible. So keeping all that in mind, we're going to go to the 13, which is basically equivalent to the uh, the major six, a nine note away major sixth. I'd like to be able to find the 13 relative to any position on the fretboard. So if I pick any note as my root note, I would like to be able to find the 13. We'll efficiently be able to do that by basically having all major scales. So these are not relative position modes. I have major scales all the way down the worksheet 
and I'll just pick something in the middle like fret 5 and say we're in A major or in this case like we could start at A major up top and then we basically say okay where is the 13 on each string related to that note meaning here it is there's only going to be one note on each string that will be the 13 so I can find the interval and I can count it out mathematically which a lot of people don't like but I mean it's quite useful to do that. So, I mean, it's practical, like, but because if you don't have the worksheet, then you can kind of figure it out. Just like if you were just messing around with a guitar without the worksheet, you know, but in any case, we have, we have one here on each string that will be related. So it is kind of doable to learn the shapes, although it gets a little wonky because of the fault line up here where the plate tectonics of the fretboard have shifted up the continent of the lower two strings so that's a little bit wonky which we talk about a bit uh, as well and then once and then so we'll do that on on each note until i get tired which happens before i finish again but like here's the c on this note where's the relative position 13 duh, 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 on the six notes related to it and as we do that we can think we'll think about then what kind of three note chord constructions can i make plus the 13 remembering that when we're adding 7 9 11 and 13 you you can also see it from as a different chord oftentimes so we'll often run into things and say like whoa that looks like an e minor or something like that uh and but we're looking at it from the perspective of a c which is these are the things that we would like to be able to do i'd like to look at the same chords and say this i can look at it from the perspective of each note in the chord which would be cool Again, you're kind of shifting your mind around in circles to do that because they're all relative to each other. It's, like, it's more like a fractal picture that's all connected together and you're just switching your point of view, your perspective around to whatever perspective is best for whatever it is that you're doing. And in this case, we're looking from this perspective. So if I can grab a 135 and the 13, I'd like to be able to do that. If I can't do that, then I'm going to try to drop the 5 and say, could I grab a 1, 3, and a 13? If I can't do that, then I'll drop the 3 and see if I can grab a 1, 5, and 13. right? And those are the three ways I'll kind of start to look at it as I grab this shape, whatever shape I'm grabbing, try to fit these other colored ones in there and see what kind of combinations I can come up with that would have you know, our baseline chords construction plus the 13 and then i tell a joke in there somewhere it's not too political or anything not great kind of a, kind of a longer one but you know i think it needs some refining down but you know it's a rough draft it's practice session and that's it continuing on with our project this time looking at the 13th interval remembering that we are starting out by thinking about the language that is associated with chord construction in which case we take a scale and we take every other note within it so we take the one we skip the two and go to the three we skip the four and go to the five we skip the six and go to the seven and there's only seven notes in a normal chord so you would think that we would stop there or possibly go around in a circle back to two but instead of naming it a two, we name it a nine. So we go to the nine and then we go to the 11 and then we go to the 13. So we have to be able to code switch in particular the nine, 11 and 13 to the intervals that we typically use and name when building a, a scale because those are the intervals that we kind of know the shapes related to. And so if I know the shape related to those intervals, then I can build my chords just based on those uh, intervals. So the way I want to be able to memorize my, my scales then is going to be by interval. If I look at the major key, then I have the intervals related to the major key, which is a perfect first, a two note away major second, a four note away major third, a five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, a nine note away major sixth, an 11 note away major seven. So we, we looked at building scales using those uh, intervals, or at least that's one way that you can think of creating shapes that are scale shapes on the fretboard, which helps us to learn uh, the, the interrelationship between the first and each of the intervals within a particular scale shape that you're looking at. Now we want to basically expand that and say, what kind of intervals do I have that are beyond just what is within like a five fret 
space that happens to be within the shape. In other words, a shape will only usually have one of e each of these intervals within it because that's what builds the scale shape. But you can reach more than one of those types of things and that's what we're working on now. That's useful because of course, when we build a chord, we wanna, we wanna grab whatever we can grab. Now note that when you call this the 9, 11, and 13 from a piano perspective or a music theory perspective, you might say, well, look, that's not equivalent to the two because it's an octave up, it's higher up in range. But again, on the guitar, typically we're gonna think of, we're gonna grab anything, I'm gonna grab anything I can. I don't have a lot of options. I don't have two hands on a, on a piano that I can basically be really kind of picky in terms of <laughs> what octave I'm in. Sometimes I can but not all the time, unless we're doing like this kind of thing, you know? So, so that means that I'm just gonna consider the nine, 11 and 13 equivalent to the even numbers, the two, four and six. And then I'm just gonna add them into my chord constructions as, be, as best I can whenever, whenever I feel the need uh, to do that. Also just remember that when we add like four uh, notes in a chord, you can name it different things. So I'm, I'm gonna be considering like the A as the root here, but you might say, hey, look, the, the, the thing that you just made there is actually another chord. It might be, it might be an E, you, you basically fingered something that could be a variant of an E chord or something like that, or an E minor or something like that. And <clears throat> that's just, the, that's gonna be the case. And that's, again, one of the problems with music theory in my mind is, <clears throat> is people want this linear structured thing that they, it's just like physics, right? Physics has the same kind of problem. I've been, again, listening to these physics courses, so that's why I have it in my head, but it's kind of a similar kind of thing because you'd like to be able to just say, this is the way it is under all circumstances, but it's not because everything is relative. It depends where you're look. it depends the angle that you're looking from. So I might, you, I might look at the same four notes and be naming it from the perspective of where I happen to be looking, which in this case is in a major key, looking at the A and in, in this case, if I'm building this chord as the root, but you could just as easily say, hey, look, if I was looking at it from the perspective of an E minor or whatever, then it would, then it would fit into that construction as well. Yeah, it would. So, so that leads to problems of, of how do I write down what I'm doing versus how do I think about what I'm doing when I'm kind of maneuvering around <laughs> on the fretboard, which are both valid uh, concerns to try to, to to try to think about in physics we, you have the same thing it's like well you, if you measure the point from here to there then you come up with one number or one one calculation but if you measure it from there to here or look at it from a third point then you come out with a different outcome especially when you consider like space time or something right and it's like okay well that's great but I ha I can't I have to look at it from one perspective at a time here because that's just how thing, that's how we're made, right? So, I mean, that's what we, so, so let's do that. All right, also just realize that when I'm adding like the one, three, five are our baseline. And uh, as we looked at before, the one and the five of any triad chord will be the same interval intervals. The three is what's different where we have the major third and uh, the, the minor third, major third being a four note away, major third, minor third being a, a three note away, minor third. And then we're gonna add whatever else to it. So this will always be kind of what we're thinking of the baseline and then adding another one is typically how we think about uh, adding everything above the one, three, five from a chord perspective. But if I'm adding like the 13, then I might not be able to grab all of the one, three, five if I have to pick which one I'm gonna drop, I would first wanna drop the five maybe because it's the one that doesn't have a lot of emotion to it. The, the third is the defining factor to say if it's major or minor. But if I can't do that, then I'll drop the third and keep the one and the five and then the 13. And if I can't do any of that, then I'll just play you know the one and the 13 possibly, or you could actually drop the one and still think of it as like an A chord without the without the one in it. Sometimes that's, uh, useful way to think of it, although somewhat uh, strange. All right, so then we have that. <clears throat> okay, so then the 13 here is equivalent to the nine. So when I say it's the 13, I'm gonna be, I wanna be able to code switch in my mind from a chord construction. If it says you're adding a 13, I'm thinking, oh, that's a major nine that we're adding. Now also remember that, that when we're playing chords from a practical standpoint, 
what do we want to do? We want to know what key we're in, right? And then I want to know uh, the notes in that key. And then I want to know if I play each of those notes, can I convert them to a chord? And if I convert them to a chord, is it going to be a major chord or a minor chord that I convert it to? We start to memorize that by saying, well, the one, four, five are major, the two, three, and six are minor, and then the seven is the diminished one, right? But that really only tells us the three notes. So remember, the, what we would like to be able to do is go beyond the three notes as we're doing now to seven, nine, 11, and 13. The problem is that those notes don't fit tightly into the same major minor convention because we're not really going from an Ionian mode, major scale, to the fourth Ionian mode. We're really going from the Ionian mode to the Lydian mode, which if I built a scale from the perspective of the fourth, that would create the Lydian mode, and it still has a one, three, five that creates a major scale. But if I go beyond that, I might run into problems. So what I so from a practical standpoint, it would be useful for us to think of the the modes here. And I'm going to give absolute mode numbering systems to try to orientate myself and then try to think about which modes have a distinct interval, which can be confusing. But uh, there's some shortcuts we can talk about and then doing the whole thing. I've been working on doing this. And if you do it systematically, you know, one thing at a time, I'm, you know, I, I think it's doable, but, and if you've taken that approach, then you would say, first learn the intervals for the Ionian or major scale. That's our Rosetta Stone. That's our point of reference. And then learn the intervals for the Aeolian, which is the main minor mode, the minor scale. And then the other modes you compare to them. In other words, the two other major modes, the four and the five related to the major scale, you compare to the Ionian, which will only have one distinct interval difference between the Ionian, so it's not too bad. And then the two and the three, the Dorian and Phrygian, you compare those minor modes to the related main minor, Aeolian or minor scale. And again, it'll only have one interval difference. So if you were to do that, if you can get that down, then you'll have you can play everything, all the related chords that are related modal chords, and we can start to name the chords as the related modal chords. So if I go to the one, four, five, I'm really playing Ionian, Lydian, Mixolydian. So if I want to stay in the same key, then, then when I go to like the Mixolydian, I'm going to have to play the seven that's going to be a minor seven, because I know that the five has a minor seven in it. Why? Because it's a Mixolydian. Most people just kind of memorize it as the dominant seven and so on that happens to be the five. But if you tie it to the actual mode, it's a lot more practical. You kind of, again, you're kind of grounding yourself in like what is actually happening. But again, that takes time to do. I get that. So you could do shortcuts a little bit as well by saying, okay, let me just think about, let me try to chunk some of this out and think about these two modes that are related to the, to the major mode. So we have the, the Lydian here, and we've got the Mixolydian. And I know that the 135 is going to be the same structure of having a major third related to this note, not to this note, right? And then, and then what's different on the Lydian? The different one on the Lydian is uh, the four, the Lydian, which is kind of easy to remember because it's the fourth that's augmented, which is the same distance as a flat fifth. And the four is an even number, and therefore the four is actually the 11. So it's going to have a funny 11, which is equivalent to the four. And then the Mixolydian is going to have a funny, uh, it has the same first three, but it's got a funny seven. It's got a minor seven. So, so if I know that, then I can say, okay, if I'm just looking at the major modes, not the minor modes, because they're going to be their own story now, but the major modes, then, then if I go past the fifth, if I play the seven, then I'm cool to do the same interval for the Ionian and the Lydian, but I have to switch it up when I get to the Mixolydian. The one, the four are cool, but then the five's that diminished one. If I go to the nine, I'm, I'm good on all of it. So the nine is equivalent to the two. So the one, four, five, I have the same interval for the nine. The 11 is equivalent to the four, and that's the Lydian. 
So, so now we have the Lydian one, which is the weird one. So if I, if I memorize the interval for the Ionian major mode, then I, I'm cool with that and the Mixolydian, but it's the Lydian, the fourth, where you're going to have a difference there. And that's the one that looks like a flat fifth. It's an augmented fourth, same distance. But, and then now we're on the 13, which is equivalent to the six. And you can see that we're good. There's no, there's on the, on the four and the five, as long as we're looking at the majors, if I know what the 13 interval is, it's a two note away, you know, major second or made or, you know, major 13, then I can add that no matter where I am, no matter which chord major chord I'm in. So I'm, I'm safe on that could be different for the minors because the Phrygian's going to have a minor second, whereas the other two have a major second, but in terms of just the majors, I can chunk it out kind of that way. So that might be a way to kind of memorize it. You're like, all right, if I just memorize the intervals for the seven, nine, 11, and 13, I'm cool with the nine and the, and the 13. No problem. I can memorize that same shape across the board. The seven is the kind of the, the real one that gives us a lot of flavor in Western music. Cause it's got that bluesy flat seven. So you're probably going to memorize that anyways, as saying the fifth, which happens to be the Mixolydian mode, has the, the dominant seven or, or the flat seven. So that's probably something that you really want to memorize because it's really important, at least in Western music, like bluesy, rocky stuff. And then, and then, and that's it. So, and then the, and then the 11, you're good on the, on the one and the four, probably not the most important thing that you're adding most of the time, not anywhere near as important as you're probably looking for that seven. Out of all of them, I would say the seven is the coolest one to make to get down. But but the eleven is the only one that's not safe. So you got the seven that's got the weird fifth thing, and then you've got the then you've got the nine and the eleven, which are cool for all the majors. So if you get that down, you got that down for the one, four, and five, and then the eleven, which is equivalent to the four, has the funny business on uh, the four, uh, which is which is the the Lydian. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. That's how I'm trying to break it down in my mind, at least. Now we're gonna say that we're going to be looking for that 13. <clears throat> so this one, which is equivalent to the major nine. Okay, so let's get all this. Do I need this here? Let's get this out. That's just gonna confuse me. Now, let's get this out of here. Get out of here. All right, so now we're gonna say we're on the 13, which is equivalent to the nine note away major six. We're gonna look at a piece of each string, or we're looking at a note on each string. I want to be able to say, if I had a root on every string, I want to be able to find not just one, not just one within the scale, but every interval that would be a major 13. And I'd like to just think a bit briefly, at least for now, the chord constructions to see if I can add a three and a five while I'm grabbing that 13. All right, and, and if I do that for each string, if I start start here and I say, okay, there's the 13, there's only gonna be one 13 within a 12 string span because there's, there's, there's only one note per string in a 12 string span. So it's really not that difficult to memorize all of the shapes. It seems a lot more mind bending uh, because, because, you know, but, if, if, but there's only one per, per place. So we can totally do that if we spend our time. So then, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Just shut up and do it then. All right. You're a talker. I don't like talkers. It's just a talker. Okay. Whatever. I like to talk sometimes. <laughs> so we're going to say, let's start with this top one. So now we're going to say, uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, so how would we do this? We're gonna say this is this is a nine note away major six, which is equivalent to the nine note away thirteen. So it's it's nine notes away. The inverse of nine is twelve minus nine. So the inverse is a three note away uh, major or minor third. So if I'm here, I can go back three notes. So if I go back three notes, I get to here. If I look at this from this note from uh, the F sharp, or uh, yeah, F sharp to the A, that would be a minor third. But if I go from the A to the F sharp, that's going to be a uh, a nine note away major six or nine note away major thirteen. Okay. So given that, what can I arpeggiate with this? I've got 
this here maybe there's my third and then here's a fifth so I could like it's on the same string so I can't play them at the same time but I could go this is the one thirteen five or or I'm sorry one three thirteen maybe one three thirteen arpeggiating one three thirteen right and I could add down here uh, one three thirteen five one or maybe this one well, that's not the five what are you doing I could go one three five thirteen which is kind of interesting because I can that's this is one way I can play my a minor uh, one three five and then I have a 13 right there so but, but wait, I'm on, am I, I'm on A major, not A mi minor, A major, and then there's the 13. One, three, five. So that's interesting, that's kind of easy to do actually. All right, and then I have another five like up here. I don't think I could, so if I was playing like this, I have a five here, so I could go, I could go one, five, three, one, five, three, or I could say, here's my, up here is my third, so now I could try to stretch it out this way, like one, pretty impractical okay moving on moving on let's bring the 13 down here where would it be on the next string if I didn't know where it was I can count it out I could say there's five I, I need a distance of nine note away 13 nine note away major six otherwise known as a nine note away 13 so it'd be five and then six seven eight nine all right so that makes sense so here from here to here uh, it's a it's a major six so so that would that makes sense because the perfect fifth would be right here power chord so if you find your fifth I can go up a whole step to a major six all right that makes sense so then I have that so top to bottom would be a nine note away uh, major six or nine note away uh, major 13, nine note away 13, major 13. If I go bottom to top, it would be nine, 12 minus nine, which would be a three note away minor third. All right, is there anything else I can grab? I could, of course, arpeggiate. So this is almost like I've got that bluesy shuffle thing that I can do here on the major key where I can grab that fifth. And then I usually grab that like this way so instead of using this finger, because my hands are not like monster hands, they're not like small, but I'm not complaining, but they're not like monster hands. So I grab it like this way, and then I can reach up to that, that and then I can play a shuffle. got the third that's above it so that's kind of fun to do muy divertito divertito can't reach up there so what else do I have Que mas tengo aquí? Oh, I've been practicing my Spanish again. I've been watching movie reviews in Spanish, which is kind of funny because, like, I'm watching this British guy who's got, like, a dry, really dry kind of voice, which would kind of be annoying, except it's perfect when they're making, when he's getting pissed at movies like The Ring of Power. And then, and then you try to say it in Spanish with like that dry British <laughs> humor. 
in Spanish. But anyway, because in YouTube, they let you change the subtitles like on almost anything now to like any, any other language as they speak, although it doesn't have like punctuation. All right, shut up. Just what are you talking about? I don't know. That's doable. If I was playing like a, a, a major like this, and then maybe I can reach out here. All right, that's. Still have that third. I was playing this one. It's got to be back here. That's kind of a stretch, but I can at least play. Moving on, let's go to the next one. Uh, we're gonna go down to this one. So this is the one I, I memorize a lot as the normal shape for like a major nine because that's usually within the five the five string the five uh, uh, fret spaces for our shapes. So that's going to be our nine. I can count that out by saying that's going to be five, ten, nine. So top to bottom is a nine note away major six, or a nine note away thirteen. Bottom to top is therefore twelve minus nine, three note away minor third. So that's cool. And then obviously we've got a third right here. So I can easily play then the 1, 3, 13, and I could, arpe I could go from there to then maybe arpeggiating over to the 5 to get like a, all my notes. So 1, 3, 13, 5, 1, 3, 13, 5. kind of cool I like the shuffle patterns I like to shuffle I like to shuffle everything I shuffle cards I shuffle patterns I think it's just a nervous twitch I have I need to shuffle stuff I got okay so what if I pick up the third down here that's doable whoa does that sound right The third is out here. It's on the six. There we go. That sounds better. And I can mute everything else. Basically, I'm muting this string, and I'm muting everything else with this this pointer. I think, kinda. That's doable. I'm not picking up this E. What is this doing here? Just playing those three. Kind of like it. It's very pretty. Hermosa. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. I could pick up this five. I could alter between that. I could do them at the same time. That's kind of hard. I can alter. Kind of hard to work your pinky. Working these two fingers. Need to work on that. Need to work on that. All right. But not right now. Let's do this one. That's going to be 5, 10, 15. I'll bring it back down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2. 5, 4, 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
I don't think that's reachable. No, not reachable, but I see you out there. I see you out there. I know you're there. Okay, so then we're going to do this one. This is going to be 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3. And then there's a kink in the tuning fault line. So 3 plus 5 up to this F is 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9 right there. All right, so then we've got this. So that's a nine note away, major six. Or a nine note away, major 13. And we've got a lot of opportunities. Obviously, if I was playing my bar chord and I was doing this, I can pick this finger up and grab that. Now, when I pick this finger up, I would be revealing the G, which I can't do unless I was playing the fifth. So I have to then lighten up my finger over here so I'm not playing that out if I want to stay in the same key. So I'd play like bar chord. Let's see what else we got. We've got the same one down here. It's a two because it's the same at the top and the bottom, so I won't count it out because it's the same as that one, which is on the top string because they're both the same string. So if I played like this, my major lean back G shape, then maybe I can reach that. Probably not at the same time, but I could play the one, the three, and then pick that one up. It would be hard for me to bar everything else out to that way. So there's the one, the three. I've got an extra finger over here. So I could put it down, throw it down on the B, which would be a nine. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm on, I got it on the wrong finger. I, it's going to land on that E. The problem is I got this G that I can't really mute. It's okay to ring out. Well, yeah, it's not. It's kind of a problem. All right. Moving on. Ahem. Let's go to the next string. Let's find, like, the D major. Moving to the D, dude. Dishes are done, dude. All right, let's go above it. So now we got to say that if I'm looking at the 13, which is equivalent to the nine note away major six, I can say that we want nine or 12 minus nine is three. And so I'm looking for a distance between this string and this string of three. Going from here to here would be negative five. And now it's, that's what I would, and then four, three. So that means if I went from here to here, B to D would be a three note away minor third, and therefore D bottom to top to B would be a nine note away major six, otherwise known as a nine note away 13. So that we have that. And then what could I do with that? What can I do with that? Well, I have a fifth above it. So I could like arpeggiate and, and I could say uh, one, like one, I could say like one, three, thirteen, one, three, thirteen, one, three, thirteen, one, three, one, three, thirteen. I also have a third down here, so I could like do this. Could go like, I could go like one, three, five. 13 or just like this getting rid of the a now i'm playing the one three and the 13 that's totally doable now 
that's kind of interesting because if I saw that shape, of course, I would normally think of it, as, maybe not of course to most, but I would think of that as a, as a minor shape, right? Now I'm playing, what is this? If that was the root, that would be a minor third and the fifth. So I would see that as a B minor, but I can look at it from the point of the D, from the standpoint of the D here, see this is what I'm talking about. You can start spinning around in circles in space time, confused, looking like Joe Biden, like at 7:30 at night when he's about to, <laughs> about to, like blank faced. I don't know what's happening here, but I could think about it from here. There's the one, and then there's the three, and then the thirteen. All right. So then we've we've got then that, and then I've got a five over here. I've, I've got a five down here, so I could say boom, boom, and then boom. Well, no, that's not right. I'd have to go way back to the two. That ain't happening. Uh, now, wait, I got lost here. Hold on a second. This was the D, not the, th and then this is the A. That, that's not happening. All right, moving on, moving on. We also know that there's a B back here. So if we're looking for a nine note away, major six, it's a three note, the inverse is a three note away. So if I go three notes back, uh, then that would be this B. So if I went from the B to the D, three note away minor third from D to B would be a nine note away major six, otherwise known as a nine note away 13. Okay, that's cool. Uh, what can I do with that? Well, there's enough. There's of course a third down here again, so I could arpeggiate it, going one three thirteen one three. If you don't like that, uh, I have a five up here, so I could go like one, five, 13, one, wait a sec, five, 13, one, five, 13, five, 13. All right, if that's not impressive, then you must, you must, it must be 7.30 at night for you as well, and you're tired. And you're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go over here. Let's go up to this one. So that's gonna be five, six, seven, eight, nine notes away, because it's a nine note away, major six, or nine note away, 13. So we go from here to the nine. And that's the one where I have that cool shuffle pattern, uh, which would be, I could shuffle from this, which I usually do this way, my bluesy shuffle pattern. And then I have the third above it, which I can add into my pattern somehow maybe. on intervals dang it this is not a jam session this is not crying out loud get your head in the game all right let's move on uh, get your head in the game all right 
get my head in the game. It might get injured. That's how people are going to hit it. I don't want to put my head in there. This is As long as it's not a football game, you have to hit with your head. That's why they put the helmet on it. I don't think that's... I don't want to hit someone with my head. I've done that before. <laughs> that's, that hurts. That, no, you got... Uh, you just have to hit harder than they hit you. And then... But wait a second. Okay. Okay, hold on. This is going to be... Like, that's doable. And then I can just mute these strings. Alright. Okay. Then we can go back here. So that's gonna be a five, ten, nine, nine note away major six, otherwise known as a nine note away uh, major thirteen. I could add the third. the third in there which is going to be this one which again kind of looks like a a b minor <laughs> but but no uh uh so we're gonna say uh there's that and then uh because we're looking at it from the perspective of the d here don't get don't get turned around uh so we have that and then i could also if i wanted to I have this one. Maybe I lose this and I grab it down there. So now I'm like, dun, dun. and then this one, which is on the seven. So we have that. All right, let's go to the next one. This is the unreachable. So there's five, 10, 15. 14, 13, uh, 12, 11, 10, 9. So I see it out there, but I can't reach that. So I'm going to let it go. And then this one I won't count up because it's the same as the top string. So there it is right there. So we have the same one from here to here. So there it is. I could play like my fifth right there. One, five, and then add the B. Wait a second, on the seven. Hold on, it's right there. And then I can go one, five, seven. I could bar this whole thing off. All right, anyway, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Let's get a joke first though. Let's get a joke in here. This is kind of a long one. It's not really political though. So it's just like, like normal. Let me get my coffee. All right, practice session joke. All right, <clears throat> it's about being too picky. All right, it's, it's best not to get too picky about stuff unless the stuff's in your nose because too much stuff in your nose will obviously get your nose stuffed up due to, you know, there, there not being much room in your nose for too much stuff in there, which can lead to a justifiably high level of pickiness in that case. But, you know, as long as the stuff is outside of your nose, it's best not to get too picky about stuff. You know, I deal with a, I deal with a full range of problems without getting too picky. Problems spanning from nuts, from, from problems spanning from soup to nuts, from soup to nuts which actually isn't too difficult once you realize that you could, you could just put the nuts in the soup, right? Consolidating li like a beautiful universal physics theory, the entire spectrum into a, a one all encompassing like soup point, the grand unified soup to nuts theory all in one place and explained in one area, which is good because, you know, I'm really getting sick of all this talk about spectrums these days. You got spectrums this, spectrums that. 
spectrums where spectrums were not meant to be. They're like all over the place. And it's like, you know what? The, the term spectrum is more than a speck over, over drummed these days. The, the word spectrum is more than a speck over drummed up. It's more than a, it's more than a speck over drummed up. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, how is it? How is it that the least annoying spectrum in my life, the least annoying spectrum is my overpriced internet bill? That shouldn't be, that should be, you would think that'd be the most, I mean, anyways, the entire soup to nut spectrum now, now just being in one messy nutty soup is a, is a good analogy for our, our current cultural situation here. And for the holidays, we can add some, some nutty fruitcake with our nutty soup. So that so that you can have you can have your your nuts soup fruit cake and eat it too all at the same time. And it's like, but I don't like I don't like nuts in my soup. It's like, what did I tell you about getting too picky? Eat your nutty soup, dang it! Or or that oh that's cute. Now now I'm supposed to listen to you to you listen to your picky complaints about my nuts soup. Uh, j just because you shoved one of the one of the soup nuts up your nose, you, you know you're only allowed to get picky about picking things out of your nose, not out of the soup. Maybe it would be justifiable if if you were eating the the nut filled soup, and due to laughing uncontrollably at my great jokes, you know, while eating the nut soup, you snorted one of the nuts into your nose. That would be justifiable complaining but and being picky maybe but but we both know that's not what happened here okay that wasn't good that's just the delivery i was like that was a raw delivery because it's practice session if i was doing it like for reals it'd be funny all right let's move on down to a maybe the g so we're just gonna go to our g G whiz, G whiz, Velma. Okay, see now I'm now I'm reminded what they did to Scooby Doo with Velma. Oh my goodness. Uh, anyway, let's do this. So what am I doing? I'm saying now we're on the G. We're looking for the eleven, and so we're looking for the eleven, and so I have to find the inverse because I'm going up above. So the 11 is equivalent to the nine note away major six, 12 minus nine is three. So I'm looking for a distance between this string and this string of three notes away, which would be five, negative five, four, three, right there. So if I'm on that G, I can reach up to this, to do E, is that right? Is that, that's not, that's something funny is happening something funny let me no wait a sec no i'm going up this way <laughs> dyslexic son of a all right i know which way i'm going don't worry i know where i'm going people okay so now this is gonna be so if i go from top to bottom that's gonna be a three note away minor third if i go from bottom to top nine note away uh, major six or nine note away 13. Okay, so then like, what else do I have round here? Now that we've revealed another string, we could see that the B is right above it. So that's gonna be our third. So once again, we have that, and that's that shape where like if I would, nor again, most of these shapes are probably thinking, hey, that's an E minor uh, shape. It's like, yes, uh, but I'm looking at it like from this perspective of a G major with a 13, uh, instead of a, a five. <laughs> All right, that's how I'm looking at it. So then, so just deal with it because that's my perspective. That's how I'm, that's how I'm seeing it. Okay, so then we're gonna say, then this is gonna be here, here, and here. We could arpeggiate by saying this is the one, one, five, 13. G8 and so you ate the arpeggi and then we could play it this way which just looks like our again another way to play our E minor shape 
but we're looking at it from the perspective of the uh, <laughs> the G with a 13. So 13, one, three. All right, move B to the N. We can play it this way. Put in the five in there, throwing down the five. That's gonna be the 13, one, five. Then we've got a three down here. So I could release this and grab this and kind of bar everything else off with this finger. I'm not pressing down, I'm just lightly barring it so it doesn't bring up. Or I could bar it and that would give me the 11, which is the C, the 13, which is another 13. So that's kind of pretty with a nice, with a nice 13 on top. Hermosa. Okay. Then we're going to say, uh, if I go to the same string, go back. So we have to go back nine note away. 13 has the inverse of a three note away major third. So I can go back three strings. Boom, boom, boom. If I go from this E to this G, that would be a minor third. But from the G to the E would be nine note away major six otherwise known as a 13 so if i'm back here i could do the arpeggiating action jackson we're going to say this is going to be the one three thirteen one three thirteen one three thirteen so i could do that i could i have a five above it so i could go well, that's going to be more difficult. Maybe not. I could go. That's not hard. What are you talking about? Difficult. Only if you're a loser. Okay. That's uncalled for. 1, 5, 13. 1, 5, 13. 1, 5, 13. Okay. And then I have a 3. I already did 3. I have a 5 up here. I ain't reaching that. All right, let's call that good. Good. I called it good. It's good. Call it good. It's good. Okay. So then the next one, uh, there's the nine. It looks like it should be like the distance from here to here would be a 10 note away, but no, we've crossed the fault line. So now the shape is different because we've crossed the fault line down here, because normally it would be like back here when I go to this distance between this string, like be here. So now we're here, because right, if it was here to here, crossing one string, it would be back one. That's what I'm trying to say. But no, because of the fault line, so we have to mess it, it messes everything up. If I counted it up, it would be five, 10, up here to 10, and then back to nine. So top to bottom, nine note away, major six or otherwise known as a nine note away 13. All right, what can I do with that? Well, that's once again, looking like our E shape. So an E minor shape would look like this, or I'm looking at it, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of a G where I'm saying I've got the one, three, 13. I could actually add the five on top as well. So now I can play it this way and say, now I've got the five. Five one three five one three thirteen. Cool. All right, and then I could say I can go beyond that. I have a five out here, so I could say I could play it this way, but then I alternate to the five. Here I'm playing with the three. And then I go to the five, which is just a power chord. But then I'm if I do that, I'm losing the... So then I, I can do it this way. All right, let's drop the three. I could just do that. That's doable. Could add the B at the bottom even. It's a little 
wonky. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got. What else do we have? What do we got? Uh, <clears throat> we've got this one. That's the unreachable, untouchables. I could probably reach it if I wanted to, because now we're, we've passed the fault line. Is that why? I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. All right, let's go down to the next one. Let's find a C. Let's find, let's go to that C. Let's go to the C major, major C. There it is. So there's our C. So then I'm going to say, what can I do with that? If I go above it looking for the 13, I need to go to the inverse. Instead of a nine note away, I'm looking for three notes between them because it's the inverse. Negative five, four, three would be right there. Same shape we've seen in the past. So A to C would be a three note away minor third. C to A would be a nine note away major six. Otherwise known as a nine note away 13. I can add to that. A, a three on top, which looks like an A minor chord, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of this C. So from the bottom to the top, one, uh, 13, and three. One, 13, one, 13, three. Okay. Okay. And then I could, what else could I do? I could, <clears throat> Go to this G out here. Is that possible? It's a stretch. But I can do it in the higher registers. So that would be the three, 13, one. So, okay, cool. All right, I could go down here and go like right there, or here, let's do the three first. Well, no, I can't really reach. Well, let's do here. I've got and this, the A, and then the G. Totally doable. Have a mosa. And then I could go back to, didn't I already do this third right here? So I could bar that off, pick up the A at the bottom too, which again is like an A minor shape. But I'm working at it from the perspective of a C. Okay. What else we got? Let's go up to the next one. That's going to be back here. So that would be negative 5, negative 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Does that make sense? Wait a second. <clears throat> negative 5, negative 10, 11, 12, and that goes back to the octave, back to 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, that makes sense. So that would be here, back, to, and that's the one. That one is unreachable, pretty much. How come I haven't run it? Which I haven't really run into yet. Uh, I don't know. Let's not, I'm not, I'm, now my head hurts. Let's do the one above it. This one's gonna be five, 10, and then 15. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three. Therefore, if I look at this shape, uh, from here down to the C, it would be a three note away, minor third. But if I go up, that would be a nine note away, major six, or nine note away, 13. And then I could pull in the G. G whiz. G whiz, man. Like that. 
if I put that D in there, I'd be grabbing the nine. So I could just bar this whole thing off, right? And I would be getting the 13, the nine, the one, no, wait, the 13, the nine, the five, the one, the three, and the 13. Let's do this one. I have a three over here. I have a three here. And then there's my C. So I could do that, which is another way to play the A minor in essence. Wait a sec. Is that right? Looking at it from the perspective of the C instead of the A minor. Okay, let's bring it down. Uh, let's just move down to this one. Move it down to this one if I could. So now it's been shifted up because of the fault line. So five would be there, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's becoming less reachable due to take. To, to plate tectonics on the fretboard, which has uh, shifted the land mass at the bottom uh, to the right, making it a little bit unreachable. Here, the sea turtles, or the, the little alleg the dragon alleg the dragon lizards can no longer cross the land mass from one to the other due to the plate tectonic movement, but I could still reach. Okay. Not much else I can do with that. I've got an open finger here. I could like, there's my G. Yeah, that's not happening. All right, that's it, it is what it is. It's out of reach almost. Another another 10 million years and you won't even be able to reach it. Okay, so now because of, you know because of plate tectonics, that's how long it takes. I'll still be around. But that's So then this is going to be there. So that's going to be if I did this it would be 5 10 9. It makes perfect sense. If I played this shape, it's just like an A minor shape, but I'm looking at it as a C with a third and a 13. That's my perspective. Don't you tell me my perspective is wrong. I could perspect things any way I want to perspect them. Perspect them. I'll perspect them the way I feel like. And then I have this one. I could just bar this off. Let's move on. Let's see if we can move on here. Uh, to the, maybe let's find an E down here. I'm getting tired. I, I'm gonna stop soon. I don't want to do this anymore, man. It's not even worth it. This isn't worth it. This is boring. I want. I just want to jam, man. I just want to jam. Okay. Calm down. I've, I'm going to say this is going to be, if I move up, I need to go three notes away. So this is going to be, because I'm under the fault line, I go up here and that's going to be, uh, no, we go this way, negative five, six, seven. Oh, what is happening? No, it's negative five, four, three. There's a three note away. That makes sense. All right. So now we're going to say, so this shape, because of the fault line, looks different. Wait, it's this way. God. That's why you turn the fretboard around, so you dyslexic. Okay. It's going 
the same way. You have no excuses here. Okay. I I knew it was that. I just wanted to see what you'd say if I went the wrong way on that. So this is going to be then if I go from bottom to top or top to bottom, three note away minor third, bottom to top is going to be a nine note away major six or nine note away 13. And then I have a third down here on the seven. So that basically looks like a D. Well, well, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Anyway, I have that. <laughs> okay, that's doable. And then I know that I have my third. I also have this. So again, that looks like an... So we're basically just playing, when we do that, we're playing a equivalent to a C-sharp uh, shape, uh, C-sharp minor, uh, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of an E with a 13. I could put this one on top, which again is basically a C-sharp uh, shape. But I'm looking at it this way. Uh, so that's okay. That is what it is. All right, I'm tired. I'm sick of this, man. I'm sick of this, man. I was doing some like again, just like a rhythm thing that I was kind of. This is just in the key of A again. That I was just doing like. I go up to my E minor. I can't really do this. I, I have to go to this. I should do that. It's a little harder to do though.
rhythm I was doing before I started. I can't. 